you were talking about you know about love killing things, and that the one the first thing is uh, not accepting the fact that there's negative things about your the person you love. But you know, I was thinking that uh, maybe in some ways, you know, that's true. And there's little things we've talked. We had a show where we talked about the different things that um, destroy love. And but you know what I was thinking that's not. We I don't think we talked about that that day is that we blame our lives. One of the reasons it's convenient to have a somebody in, in your life is that if you're not satisfied with the way your life looks, you have a handy scapegoat for why it looks the way it does because you're I living with somebody. You all my pretty years. That's right. You're living with somebody who does, you know, whatever, you know, fill in the blank that causes you to not have the life that you could have if you were free of their dominating, you know, or w- whatever influence. And, and I can see that um, that's a real destructive thing. <laughs> you know, that's pretty <laughs> me destructive. Is, you know, that I've, I, when I hear Arthur talk, I hear him t- blaming me for a lot of things that seem completely odd or unfair or unsubstantiated or not my experience, you know, but they are obviously really real for him. And then when I think of um, you know, that there's a whole list that I have on my side of mm. things that I blame him yeah, for and, and right. why everything's his fault. Thank you, Miss Helper. <coughs> Are you choking on your words over there? Yeah. Have a so, slug. So, you know, being boring, that's one way Arthur blames me for his life being the way it is, is because I'm boring, so um, I, I block adventure in his life. Let me give you, I, I promise you, let me give you a, a retort to that. Mm-hmm. I find myself boring, not only boring, <laughs> but cowardly because I'm too damn, if it's so bad, why the hell am I still here? Because I'm a coward. That's a good question. Because I get a lot out of this relationship. We're like two rats clinging to a piece of driftwood. And that, you know, that's that's a bit harsh. But I mean, that's <laughs> a, viewer that's judge a, for a yourself. wee bit. Yeah, you judge for yourself. I mean, look at us mm. doing this show. I mean, we are intellectual, philosophical soulmates on so many levels. We go out and film. We have one camera. We trade the camera back and forth. She's every bit the videographer I am, and you know, and vice versa. And we actually we, take the same shots. We take the, we have that's to, the we have real to drawback. move the camera in between us the, taking turns filming, because otherwise we'll duplicate each other's shots a lot. <laughs> I mean, 30 years, I mean, and, and it's been that way a lot from the start. We would have the same thoughts. We co-author books together. We write together. We haven't been doing that lately. I think that that was really pushing the envelope in terms of not the ideas, but in terms of actually uh, getting it said right. So there's so many levels at work. But I've always been the kind of guy, I'm like Don Corleone. I'm a man who insists on hearing the bad news right away. And the way you perhaps a show is so critical of of what's going on in in, um, the world, in, in the human uh, the human condition at this critical juncture in our um, evolutionary history. Because we think we're going to off ourselves if we don't wake the hell up. So that's what this show is about, wake the hell up. A question of waking the hell up. <laughs> what are we doing? What's it mean? So there's a lot that works, but I'm interested in the things that kill the love. Because I'm like Oliver Twist. Um, the board were meeting in solemn conclave when Mr. Bumble rushed in in great excitement and addressing the man in the tall hat said, Begging your pardon, sir, but Oliver Twist has asked for more. Well, that's me. Put that on my headstone. Arthur Hancock always asked for more. Until, un, until I've got, I'm like Reverend Ike. I don't want my pie in the sky by and by. I want my pie right now, goddammit, with vanilla ice cream on it. He didn't say goddammit. Can I say, God damn it, before the 11 o'clock hour when we all turn into adults? I'm totally confused about what's allowable or not on network TV today. I'm interested in having all that other stuff, philosophical soulmates, intellectual soulmates, even though scholastically there's no competition. This woman is so much smarter than me. Uh, Possibly because I hated school with a passion. I suppose if I had applied myself, but that's like saying if I had bigger body parts, I could be in certain kind of movies. But um, there's let, different so, so kinds of saying? intelligence. I'm, yeah, thanks. So, well, you know, I'm part a, of me wonder is like, okay, I mean, at a certain level of us being real about our lives, 
viewers will find it interesting. But I think there's, it's like at a certain point also, um, is, you know, how much of our airing of our dirty laundry is really interesting to people. I mean, I, I don't know how, you know, I guess people really like reality shows and they like things oh, like um, what, what are those daytime and daytime talk shows? Bachelor, where, gang bang, is it going to be that? Geraldo, you know, where people end up hurling, oh, God, hurling chairs at each other because they've. Yeah, I think we can probably talk about our relationship in a reasonably sane manner. No, I wasn't without, talking about without, her, us hurling chairs. I was no, just saying. Like dirty laundry. I and mean, there's plenty I'm not telling on TV. <laughs> we get enough positive feedback, we'll tell all, folks. Well, maybe not all. We might even throw the odd chair. Well, you know, something I, I thought of was it was interesting. We were somewhere on uh, last weekend, and Arthur did one of his songs that is. Uh, because I love you, which is about experiencing what he calls universal love, which is not a directed romantic love, like an old lady at Krispy Kreme, right? A love that, that without there being any expectations or uh, requirements from that love. And he said something in the introduction, which he's said many times that I've heard him do it. That um, you know that that, that it, when I love you, then I there's I don't have to do anything. Um, about it. And what was really odd this time was it was a small group, but it sounded like every woman in the crowd groaned with misery. Yeah. Like, oh. what kind, you know, you're not going to do something to me because you love me? And uh, I was kind of taken aback. Like, you, they, you and me both. Like, that the only way they could understand love was in the context of romantic love. And that, that with, if you didn't do something about it, it was it was a bad thing, you know, and you don't send me flowers <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I think that you know, but I I think that you know even we have these concepts about what love should be, and yet That's you know sure. how much is it still infecting our thinking about how you you know my expectations of how you should behave, if if you say you love me, well then you should accept me for who I am you know and what? if I feel like you're not accepting me yeah. for who I am then how can I accept your professions of love as being anything meaningful well, you don't get many professions lightly because <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth is I think I about my, Katie no, wait, is that you are hypersensitive about criticism yes you take it really personally right so anything I say like that volume is too loud on that you know it's like ah! you know it's it, take it to heart and act mm -hmm. like I'm just brutally criticizing you. I, I mean, I am critical. I'm a Virgo, yeah. which is synonymous with pain in the ass. I think people who, you, who watch this TV show are aware of your critical nature. <laughs> you think? I should hope so. Must be so. getting the job done. <laughs> Not really. I don't want to come across as a, a you know. Uh, but sorry, go ahead and finish your point. Well, just that, um, yeah, my sensation is that, like I said, in, you know, we reviewed the last 20 minutes of the show that aired last week before we started filming, just so we kind of knew what we what had happened. And um, my sensation is that you... Yeah, that's almost hitting. I'm looking at a level over there. It's really hot. You <laughs> talk? Nothing's changed since... Well, so, you're, Arthur, you're looking at the master. Don't pay any attention I'm looking at the master, okay. So um, my sensation is that... You, if I changed to, you know, that the reason you don't love me is because of that I'm not acting right, that I'm doing things wrong, that I'm interested in the wrong things mm -hmm. and That's not true. doing the right things. Yeah. And if I just changed my behavior, then you could love me again. Yeah, it's like I, I find our lives <laughs> really, the, the way we live our lives, even though most people say, wow, cool, you need a video business and you're doing this stuff together and you, you're your own boss and you know, you've know got nifty ideas and you can create together and all that. But Oliver Twist, the Oliver Twist syndrome. And, and for sure, in terms of actual experience, there's never an excuse for boredom. I mean, other than being insane, which right. is what I am, which is what our whole work is about, and you're insane for still being here. If you were a saint, if you know, you would... The, the fact that you're still living with somebody like me is complete evidence of your insanity. <laughs> so we're both nuts. And but my excuse, I mean, there's always the excuse. My justification for my criticism is 
I want all that stuff that's really good and it's really great and it's really part of what I loved and do love about you. Mm -hmm. I accept about you. However, in, over the, the eons, the glacial ages, the geological ages that have passed in the last 30 years, I've noticed a steady erosion of adventure. A real mm -hmm. kind of sense of adventure and newness and certainly romantic um, love. And I copped all sorts of stuff that I've done to, to block that. But it, it, it has happened nonetheless. And it seems like, I mean, we were living in a town that was so boring. We moved here in, in January. My parents died <clears throat> within eight days of each other about, um, that isn't, that's irrelevant, but they did. Uh, five, six years ago and left us a little bit of money. And I said, okay, we'll invest everything. Thank God in CDs, stock market. Uh. But we're going to buy one toy because the only way I'm going to be able to live in this hick town. And so we bought a home theater. And I, I, I don't, we had a, we'd had a TV before that. We got a TV when we started <clears throat> getting into video. And I got hooked on movies, and we had like hundreds of super VHS movies, tapes. and But, I, you know, now we have this monster screen and projector and surround speakers. And basically every night I'm like a slug. I'm like your average schmo. I go in there and get in my lazy boy <laughs> and just, ah, uh, you know, just uh, go to every night's movie night. And when there's no movie, it's high definition cable night. Go charter, fix our sound, and I'll give you some more plugs. <laughs> you know, you scratch my back. <laughs> so, um, what else? So, that's a killer right there, man. TV is probably a, you know, I, I would say probably that's done more damage to our relationship than anything. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this. We yeah. know this. But I'm still hooked. Yeah, but it's like you're a junkie. I am a junkie. I've always, I like, you know, I would, if there was like a, if, if drugs were legalized, I probably would live on like morphine suppositories or something. You are definitely. I'm definitely like the, the take the edge off, take the pain away. Oh, that's and interesting. there's nothing so like since the boob you, tube. You're not, to, since you're not drinking and you're not doing any drugs, yeah. you're substituted television. Television, that's it. How so if I could go back to drugs and alcohol. I'd probably be much more of an upbeat person. Well, you'd be more. There'd be more adventure. I'd be, there'd be more adventure in life. Would be a closing time at Gray Eagle and say, "Hey, who's ready for flapjacks? Let's let's go over to let's come over to our house and watch a midnight movie." Yeah, there you go. I used to do that. Wait a second, you just what? I. Go watch a movie. I've given up on relating to people.